Hello. Hi, I'm Patricia McNeely from Chicago, Illinois. And if you're new to my channel, I am all about Ascension, Twin Flame Soulmates, and the brand new body template with your brand new chakras and how to get it open. So I'm here to help you with that. If you don't know what ascension is, what that is, is actually uh, just like the word implies. It's an upliftment and you can go through various symptoms. Check it out on my website, which is linked below. So welcome. In this video, I want to talk to you about the solstice that we're coming up to here. So it's not here yet as of the filming of this video. However, we're already in it. Okay, collectively, we are in it. Individually, not everybody is ascending. And that's one of the weirdest things about this one. This is going individual, person by person, because there needs to be a focus on the individual, not on a group or something like, or a special group or people that think like, well, you know, we're some of the chosen ones. Honestly, everybody chose before they were born. So like, let's Toss out that mentality right there. You chose to be here and that's that. Okay, what you do with it once you're here, that is all relevant on what you choose day to day. So to get started, what I wanna to talk to you about is this is a solstice of separation. What this means is it is separating the people who are actually not really ascending at this point, meaning they are not going to have further activations, not yet. And the people who have and getting them situated for their new lives. And I have a diagram back here that I'm going to show you to kind of illustrate some of this and why. First of all, we're no longer chasing and running. The focus has to be inward and it has to be a focus on your light body. Because... You will feel that you stall out or you will feel that you get sick or have what I call pseudo sicknesses while you are trying to figure it out. Don't bother figuring it out. Come to me for help because I know this inside out and literally inside out. I have the science and the biology and the love all to go together. And the love has to be included and the biology of your body has to be included. Okay, and that's what a lot of people do is they separate. They're like, well, it's just about you know, grief, or it's just about your inner child. No, it is about everything culminating in an individual so that they can thrive again. No longer chasing and running. It's a focus on health and the emotions that have run through the body, usually from childhood or some event in your life. Now, why is this happening? It's so that love, the real love can start. You can stop being sick with grief, sick with FOMO, the fear of missing out, sick with defeat, sick with resignation. Do not confuse surrender for resignation. Surrendering to your higher self is very different. You have to do it differently. It is not resignation. Resignation is like, well, I don't know what else to do, so I'm just going to roll over and play dead. You'll lay there dead as a slug on the floor until you decide that you are willing to try something different. And I hate to break that news to people because, but you need to hear it. You need to hear the truth of this is even if you do not know what to do, it's time to reach out for help. Otherwise, it will persist. What you resist persists. If you're focusing on the wrong direction, you need to hear about this. And that's another thing, real love. Do not confuse the things that are said out there for real love. You don't have to learn the right phrase to put in a text. You don't have to learn how to play the game. There are no games because your soul doesn't want to play those games anymore. Do you ever think about it that way? You know, from a soul level, it's kind of like, wrap it up. We got to get moving. We need to get you into the place where you will really thrive. And if you're just spinning your wheels there, you're like worse than treading water. Because at least in water, sometimes you can feel something. If you are not feeling what you're supposed to feel, you can usually sense that. Are you feeling unmotivated, not enthusiastic? Okay, 
This is not a COVID symptom, even if you've had COVID. There's a lot of things out there having to do with ascension that are being attributed to COVID. And I will say this, COVID probably popped the lid right here over the heart area of all kinds of things people needed to work on. Their respiratory health, their heart health, their immune system. You don't just have an, uh, one immune system, you have two parts of your immune system. But I don't want to get off track here. This is a solstice of separation. You are separating from the people that would drag you down and it's necessary. And if you are not separating, you're going to stay put for probably one or two seasons while other people get through this. You may not like to hear that. And I'm sorry if people can't really handle the truth. It's time to like hear some truths about this because there's a lot taken as like somehow this is everybody sweeping along. And no, it's not. First of all, not everyone has done the proper work. They may have done work or what they consider work or self-improvement. If you have not begun to open up your template and felt the difference, that's not doing the work. That is what I'm here to help with. And I know how many people that I've worked with and taught, and it's obviously not everyone. I am in the works to, you know, get this out to a broader audience because it needs to. I feel that I see things in my neighborhood. Lately, I've had um, a lot more friends and family reaching out because they are experiencing the ascension. They're not where I'm at. I don't want to be in that place anymore, but I know what to do. And I've been doing it for a very long time, and I'm happy to help. My help is a service. That is what I'm here to do. And that service is doing things from 5D, and I'm going to explain that to you here. But first, we have our ever-ready, not for primetime players here, to demonstrate some things, okay? So you last saw them when they were portraying the angel and the devil. Take a bow, ladies. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Today, we're going to talk about the dating game, okay? Oh my goodness, I met this guy, we kind of caught eyes, and I was thinking something, like I thinking it meant something, and, and then like he didn't catch my eye again, and oh my god, like I just don't know. And then there was this other guy, and I just don't know what these things mean, like I'm afraid to approach someone, I really want to be with someone, I really, 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 really want to be with someone. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, I want to be with someone too. It's been the most driving force in my life. I want to be with someone. Sometimes I get the sense like that they don't approach me and there's some reason, but like I'm not really unappealing. I'm intelligent. I'm, you know, I have a lot of gifts and like what's up with that? Well, what's up with that is sometimes your soul knows what's happening with that guy and maybe that guy's a player or maybe that guy has a disease. I mean, that happens and people don't divulge the truth. They don't sit there and say like, oh, well, I have herpes. What if there were a vaccine for herpes? I, would people get it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. But a lot of people like go spreading that around because they're just more interested in their own satisfaction. That is like the ultimate narcissism to not divulge the truth, to not tell someone, don't ask, don't tell. Even when people ask, they don't always tell. Hey, Barbie. Barbie and Barbie. <laughs> you know, actually, maybe you are dodging a bullet with that guy, okay? Maybe you're not intended to catch some disease before you meet your true love and have to heal that too. Oh, yeah. You know who I meet? I meet people that, you know, they do all kinds of drugs and they just do it recreationally and, you know, they're okay and they're very so, you know, they're sociable. They're just doing it socially. But then they wind up asking me for money. I mean, do I look like a sugar mama? Do I look like a sugar mama to you? No, girl, you don't look like a sugar mama. What's up with that? Why are I always attracting these losers? They start off with a bang and then they fizzle out and then, you know, they want me to mother them and then I find out, you know, they're playing with someone else or they got like three kids and I just can't deal with that anymore. Why can't I meet someone who's straight up, nice, ain't carrying all this baggage, 
is ready for committing and it, it's just weird it's just weird it's just weird oh i know the minute i meet someone when they come to talk to me i feel myself go into almost cardiac arrest what is that am i supposed to help them with something are they like needing rescuing stop rescuing people focus on yourself focus on you barbie focus on yourself okay focus on yourself i'm gonna name you after one of my favorite singers shirley bassey well shirley guess what no you don't deserve that and guess what there is a better way to meet a better quality of person even if they're a soulmate okay do not chase people down the rabbit hole let them be separated from you you will never hear from them again and be glad now there's another thing if you're actively seeking it if you just go to try and stick your toe in the water again and be like well let me look up so and so see what's happening if you want to go down that memory lane a lot of times all you're going to get is nostalgia you're going to get weirdness you're going to hear something you don't want to hear and mainly a lot of times it's just almost like boring okay because they're not reaching out to you you're you're like two people going like hey remember when we were in high school yeah we used to talk in the hallway yeah and then there's nothing happening there's no excitement there's no invitations there is crickets on the other end okay even crickets are a much more soothing sound than the emptiness of the heart okay you know i'm really i'm really really tired of meeting these people and then i think it has potential and it just goes nowhere like why do i deserve this i don't deserve this i'm ready to just give it to god okay <sighs> let's just kind of focus on that right here god is naturally a part of the equation absolutely we are all created by god and we have divine connections barbie and shirley it is time to start using your divine connection girls let us get on with it okay now take the time with this or you get stuck in karma so let me show you how that is that i'm talking about this okay so let me move you in close here sorry for the lighting it's about to uh start raining which we need the rain i did a prayer for rain here in my area two days ago at the forest in my grid point and uh blessedly it feels like my prayer is being answered the animals need it the plants need it we just need it use the water use the water drink the water plant the planet that's what i say okay let's get started in 3d what has 3d been well these have been usually tribal lives which are frequently thought of survival times so going back to caveman days paleo and yeah there's people who have had lives there that's why paleo kind of things appeal to them because their bodies are already geared up for it maybe more recent incarnated people are not actually there and they are integrating you need to integrate the template your brand new body blueprint which enables you to be omnivorous i know how to help you with that meanwhile your tribal living how did we survive we survived in usually um units of congregation of people that were tribes and the tribe had elders that had healers it had warriors it had hunters everyone had their task right everyone's contributing to the greater good and what else we were doing earth keepers these are many of the earth keeper societies and cultures that were created to kind of keep that level up keep everyone going as we got to a certain point so you have the ancient americas these are all native american tribes navajo toltec mayans you have 
Incans, you have Aztecs, you know, names that you know, names that have been forgotten in history. And in South America, same thing. You have Australia, you have what is called the Aborigine. Have you ever wondered why people consume things like that? Like you give them, you give them a case of something, it's gone, there's no storing it. Because there was no storage. Like let's think sensibly. No storage in this. You consume it, you hunt it, you use every single piece of that thing. You don't waste anything, right? This is a collective memory. Even after cataclysms, you're hoarding stuff. You're not just hoarding, you're foraging for what you can find in the rubble and use again. There's an earthquake. What do you go hunting for? Anything that's usable that you can reuse. That's not a new concept. Recycling is not a new concept. Upcycling is not a new concept. We've had to do it from these lives. Australia, Africa, so many rich cultures, not only rich cultures, one of the richest kingdoms in the world from Africa. And I mean, in terms of modern money, it would still surpass the GDP of several large industrialized nations. So much so that he gave away, the king gave away gold and other things. It was a very highly evolved culture because when you have support, when you have a system in place, you can focus on other things such as the arts, the culture, the music. You can expand a bit and that has happened. The Asias, uh, South Asia, Eastern Asia, Western Asia, Okay, that's a lot of cultures. So that's ancient India, ancient Japan, ancient China, healing modalities, mathematics, astronomy. Okay, we forget what these cultures have contributed that have been brought forward and are still usable because they are um, based on universal things that we all have. Okay, and Europe, Europa. Okay, so many earth keeper cultures, the Celtics, the tribes, the Germanic tribes. I mean, you can go way back and not only that, the diaspora. So what is important about this? A 3D timeline has been supported from 5D, okay? That is how babies are born, but this is why some people will go infertile. They won't produce babies because they've had too much of this. They've had too much of this. So from a metaphysical standpoint, the connections are all worn out, they're old, they're, they're way too ancient, they're not refreshed, and they are tired out. Women, if you are paying attention to this, get some help from me for your menstrual cycles, for the parts of you that have been worn and torn from these timelines. 5D has supported 4D, but that has supported an awful lot of stupid stuff like wars, battles, depriving each other, taking each other's stuff. Like I'm talking about even recent events, like right at the point of harvest, you're gonna take a torch to someone's wheat fields and just leave the people to starve. You didn't kill the people, but you essentially starved them to death. 5D is no longer supporting such things like that. 5D is here to support real love, not using and abusing each other, not playing games. Men have their fair amount of use, being used and abused too. So I'm not just singling out women or saying men are all the perpetrators. Men get their fair share also. They've had a lot in these timelines. Now, let's move it over to this side, okay? This side here, 90, okay? At the new level, you are leaving the fourth dimension. If you're not leaving, you're staying. <laughs> Have you been leaving the fourth dimension? Okay, probably because it's characterized by almost feeling like you're being pushed out the door. Something's not supporting you. You can't create and you're being pushed out the door. People are mean to you and it's leaving you scratching your head. Okay, that's not the only ways to know. But there is a new level of living. That new level is supported from the ninth dimension. You have to make these footholds. And it goes like this, get your light body template open, make your fifth dimensional, make your sixth dimensional, make your seventh dimensional, make your eighth and make your ninth. Your ninth is for your level of thriving. 
Your ninth is for your level of thriving as a couple. That is vitally important. And that is why if you are focusing on the wrong person, you're going to drain out in karma. That's how that works. Karmic things will still keep happening if you are hanging on to the wrong person. If you are trying to hang on to a marriage for whatever reason, you're going to find out that you start to get the push to get out. It'll feel very urgent. I'm here to help you with those things because they're not widely understood that once you are starting to activate yourself, you have to do things a little differently. Less with the mind, more with your light body. So also to help you, I have a book that I wrote, which is to help your emotional body connections. It is called Real Love and it is intended to help you start to feel things differently and get started. So thanks so much. Find me at loverwithin.com. Check the links below. Have a one-on-one -on -one session. Bye now.